one and a half million kilometers from Earth and one month's flight to its destination. On December 26, 2021, after years of delay, NASA launched the most expensive space observatory ever, James Webb Space Telescope. The telescope will be placed in an orbit about the Sun-Earth L2 Lagrange point, located about one and a half million kilometers from Earth, which is four times the distance between the Earth and the Moon, and it takes 30 days for the telescope to reach L2. At Lagrange points, the gravitational pull of the two large masses precisely equals the centripetal force required for a small object to move with them. It is incorrect to say that James Webb will be at L2, rather James Webb will orbit around L2. The distance of the telescope from the L2 point varies between 250,000 to 830,000 kilometers. The period of the orbit is about six months. The maximum excursion above or below the ecliptic plane is 520,000 kilometers. The maximum distance from the Earth is 1.8 million kilometers, and the maximum Earth-Sun angle is less than 33 degrees. L2 is a saddle point in the gravitational potential of the solar system. Because saddle points are not stable, James Webb will need regularly fire on board thrusters to maintain its orbit around L2. This station-keeping maneuvers will be performed every 21 days. To maintain solar power, the orbit is designed such that the telescope is never in the shadow of the Earth or the Moon during the mission. Also, the James Webb is not designed to be serviced or repaired because it will be out of reach. Hubble is in low Earth orbit. The L2 is well beyond the reach of human astronauts. A large orbit makes it easier to get the spacecraft to L2 as well as maintain its orbit. However, large orbits can also permit stray light from the Earth or Moon to get past the Sun shield and strike the primary or secondary mirrors. In addition, a large orbit reduces communication opportunities. Because Webb Telescope is solar-powered, it cannot pass through the Earth's shadow during the mission. Orbits are selected that avoid shadow crossing by selecting the launch time for a given launch date. The L2 orbit shape is not constrained, so Taurus orbits or halo orbits are acceptable and are determined primarily by the launch time of day and day of year. The Freedom in L2 orbit design allows for multiple launch opportunities for most months and minimizes the velocity needed to get to orbit. A trajectory can be fashioned so that the telescope falls into orbit about L2 rather than having to forcibly inject itself into a set orbit using its propulsion subsystem. This saves propellant and makes for simpler orbit maintenance. The L2 orbit has an orbit period of six months. While orbits about the L2 point are inherently unstable, the orbit size is large and the orbital velocity is low, about 1 km per second. So the orbit decays slowly. However, James Webb's large sun shield roughly the size of a tennis court, is subject to significant solar radiation, which results in both a force and a torque. The direction of solar force varies as the observatory's attitude changes from observation to observation. The solar torque is balanced by reaction wheels, but periodically the accumulated momentum is dumped by firing thrusters. Because James Webb operations are event-driven, the observatory attitude profile and momentum dumping cannot be accurately predicted months in advance. These two perturbations increase the acceleration of James Webb from its orbit about L2 and necessitates more frequent orbit maintenance, station-keeping maneuvers than other Lagrange orbit missions, which are typically three to four times per year. Accurate orbit determination will require daily tracking measurements over a period of 19 days so station-keeping will be performed every 21 days. Orbit perturbations along the Sun-L2 axis have the greatest impact on orbit stability. Thrusters are mounted on the spacecraft bus located on the side of the Sun shield facing the Sun. Those used for orbit correction and oriented as far away from the Sun shield as possible. The Sun shield can support a large Sun pitch angle for orbit correction 
than that allowed for sine's operations. A sun pitch angle is the angle between the point in direction and the satellite sun line. The point in direction is the bore side of the telescope, also called the V1 axis of the observatory. This architecture allows thrusters firing at angles up to 90 degrees from the sun consistent with sun avoidance restrictions, which is sufficient to provide orbit correction in all cases. The orbit will be biased to compensate for mean outward forces associated with gravitation of the planets and radiation pressure on the sun shield. During science observations, the observatory will be pointed at a target in an orientation at which the sun shield center of pressure is not aligned with the observatory center of mass. As solar photons hit the large sun shield, they place a torque on the observatory as a whole. The Attitude Control Subsystem ACS, counteracts this torque by appropriately changing the spin rate on the reaction wheels, with the consequence that angular momentum accumulates in the reaction wheels. Momentum accumulation depends on the solar pitch angle, the roll orientation of the telescope and the visit duration at a particular point in position. The angular momentum spin rate of the reaction wheels must be managed to be kept within operational limits. Thank you for watching, make sure to subscribe and don't forget to check our other videos about Webb Telescope, including its full deployment sequence.